problem, we have our car trying to make a turn, right? We want our car to go around the turn. So the visual is, here's our car. It's going to try to make it around a certain turn. And we want to figure out, well, on Friday we said, okay, what's the, min the maximum speed we can travel and still make the turn? This one's just phrased a little bit differently. It's saying, uh, how much, what's the minimum friction in order to make the turn? So there needs to be a certain amount of friction in order for us to, to turn the corner, right? If it's too little, you're going to skid out, like on ice, for example. Um, okay, so in this problem, the first step, you know, on all our problems should be to draw a free body. So what's the force that keeps us in the circle? Friction. Friction, right? So if you were driving on ice, if you try to turn on ice, it's going to be challenging to make that turn. So we have the force of friction. Remember, our forces uh, that keep us in a circle are always towards the center of our circle. So if this is kind of our portion of our circle here, this was like our radius here, which is 22, then the force of friction is towards the center of that circle. Okay. At the same time, we also have gravity pulling down. And we also have a normal force holding us up from the ground, right? We're on the surface of the ground. So that should be how you start these. Um, and then what's our step two, once we have our free body? Set up your equations of motion. So we're going to set up our equation. So that means we're going to go ahead and sum up our forces. So when you look at this picture in the x direction, we only have one force. That's the force of friction. All right, we're going to set that equal to MA. Do we know anything about this A? This is centripetal A, right? This is a centripetal acceleration. This is the acceleration that keeps us in the circle. So that's always towards the center, so we can write it as MAC. So that's our X equation. We're going to do the same thing with our Y equation down here. In our y equation, we only have two, right? F normal going up, gravity going down. That equals MA. Is this also an AC? No. OK, why is it not? What would that look like for us to have a vertical acceleration with our car? OK, it would be going like this, right, in a loop to loop. So it would be going in a loop to loop, but we're just on the ground. Our car is just on the ground. It's going to make a turn. Vertically speaking, it has zero acceleration. Horizontally, it has a acceleration, right? Circular acceleration, but vertically, it has zero. So we'll just make that clear. This is going to be zero then. This leaves us with the familiar relationship. When we're on flat ground, what can we say is true about the normal force? It's the same as the weight. Right, so our car is here, normal uh, gravity is pulling down, and the normal force would be exactly equal to it. Okay, so Fn equals mg, right? That's the, the weight. Now on Friday, we kind of did it with a bunch of baby steps, right? I asked for several things, find the normal force, find the acceleration, and so forth. This time, we're just going to try to do it all at once. So let's kind of do it just solve it all at once. So what's our equation for friction? Mu times the normal force. And what's our equation for AC? V squared over R. So we have mu times Fn equals mv squared over R. Um, now we do know F normal, right? I mean, you could calculate the number, but let's just do it with the variables. So what's our equation for F normal? M times G. So this gives us mu mg equals mv squared over r. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this like this is I want you to see what happens. What happens to our masses here? Since you have mass in both sides, the masses are actually don't matter. So in this car problem, it doesn't matter if your car was real heavy, like a truck, or if it was real light. It doesn't matter. What matters is the coefficient of friction, 
What matters is how fast you're moving. What matters is how steep the turn is. Those are the three factors that matter, not the mass of the car. Okay, so ultimately I was solving for mu, right? So let's just do the one algebraic step, divide, divide by g. So mu equals v squared over r g. Now, of course, you have numbers. You could s start solving things, you know, at any time. Uh, I just wanted to do it all at once, especially so you could see how the mass didn't matter. Um, okay, so let's just plug in the numbers. So what was our v? 20? 20. 20 squared divided by our radius, which was 22, divided by our low g, 9.8. So again, what this means is this is the minimum mu to make the turn. If mu was higher, then you'd be okay. If mu was lower, what would you have to do? Slow down the car, right? If you wanted to make the turn, you'd have to slow down the car. Otherwise, you'd skid out and keep trying to go in a straight line. 